Hey, what's up? I've got some more lore content for you guys. I've been wanting to make this video for a while because I think it's a very interesting topic. How can we translate popular or fan favorite Hearthstone decks over the years into similar style decks in Legends of Runeterra? I'm here to answer that question and more, but before I get into the decks, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay, and consider visiting my Patreon for additional benefits. With that, I hope you enjoy this video. Quick caveat and background before getting into the lists, the comparisons I'm making are mainly conceptual, whether it be how the decks feel, or how they try to accomplish the same goals with their game's respective tools. Obviously, these won't be a perfect one-to-one, -one, as the games are quite different, but I think I've made some very solid comparisons as a player who's hit Legend in Hearthstone a few times in my five years of play, and a multi-rank one player in Legends of Runeterra. With that, now we can begin. Let me take you back to early Hearthstone, the year is 2014, and one of the premier control decks of the meta is Handlock. The main goal of Handlock is to play incredibly defensively, using removal spells to keep the opponent's board down while developing big units in the form of giants and legendaries in the mid and late game. Now the cool thing about giants is that they receive massive cost decreases based on how many cards you have in hand, or how low HP you are. Then you drop multiple for big pressure turns that can be converted to lethals or the opponent surrendering. Now this is very similar to Legends of Runeterra's Deep deck. The goal for Deep is very similar. Use removal spells to keep the opponent's board down, and defensive units to trade into enemy units. Much like how giants receive big discounts based on a certain condition, sea monsters are very similar, especially paired with Nautilus. The deck wants to mill itself into the last 15 cards to hit a big stat boost, and Nautilus himself discounts the sea monster's cost in order to drop multiple in the mid late game in a very similar fashion to Giants. Honestly, Nautilus himself feels like playing Jaraxxus with how swingy the game becomes once he resolves. Now that we covered a control deck, let's head the opposite direction and talk about an absolute aggro classic that was viable for years, and that is none other than the infamous Face Hunter. This deck aims to play extremely fast and aggressively, swarming the board and attacking relentlessly, utilizing the Beast Tribe with damage synergies like attack buffs. Once the opponent is within certain HP thresholds, it uses direct damage spells to close out the game. A lot of you probably already know where I'm going with this, and that's right, it's one of my favorites, Spider Burn. Spiders function exactly like Hunter, to the point where you'd probably feel no difference playing them back to back. Beast Tag is translated to Spider Tag, and of course we have synergy and board buffing effects with Elise, and namely, Frenzied Skitter. When the opponent gets low on HP, we even have direct damage spells to close out the game in very similar fashion. Back to Control, I have another absolute banger that you probably remember, and that is Control Warrior. The whole premise of Control Warrior is to slow down the game with damage and execute style spells while dropping big units in the mid to late game. Usually one after another, and that creates insurmountable amounts of pressure and HP for the opponent to deal with. This is extremely similar to Legends of Runeterra Swain. For one big reason, they're both red. Less importantly though, their gameplay identities are basically the same. Swain also has access to direct damage and a cheap execute style spell that finishes off damage units. These spell combos definitely help make the style of control comparable, but it goes even deeper. Playing Swain into Leviathan back to back in the mid late game feels very similar to dropping a legendary on each turn and creating what I would definitely call an insurmountable amount of pressure to deal with. It is a linear playstyle that has innate synergy between the cards included. Luckily, Swain doesn't have Brawl, which gives me PTSD, so I think I should be grateful about that. Next we have a personal deck to me, which was my first competitive Hearthstone deck, and a fan favorite for a lot of people I know, and that is Freeze Mage. Freeze Mage back in 2014 especially was a combo control deck with a one turn win con that you had to set up in hand. Over the course of the game, your only goal is to stay alive to turn 10 by any means necessary. This means removal, secrets that prevent you from dying, counter spell, which is important for later, draw cards to find combo pieces, and the game winning combo itself. I personally thought the combo of Alexstrasza into Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance was really fun to pull off before I realized if I wanted to climb, I should probably not play a deck that takes 20 minutes to finish a game at rank 25. Legends of Runeterra has recently added Freeze Mage to the game in the form of Rise. Rise is also very similar to Exodia from Yu-Gi-Oh! 
assemble the pieces all together and you literally win the game. The card says so. That's how it works. The deck is full of stall tools, removal, draw for sure, and Lore's version of counterspell, deny. Told you that'd be important. Your goal is to stay alive by any means necessary, and Rise plus Ionia has plenty of means to do so. While the combo itself is slightly different between the two games, one being primarily from hand and Rise needing the whole board to pull it off, the playstyle and utility of both decks are strikingly similar. Okay, here's one that probably gives you either a dopamine rush, or immediate PTSD, and no in-between, and that is Miracle Rogue. This deck is all about spell slinging in order to draw and find lethals especially from little to no board, all coming from hand and random cards off the top of the deck. The one card that makes it all possible is Gadgeton Auctioneer, alongside of course the cheap and efficient rogue spells, creating a very scary engine for draw and damage. Oftentimes losing to this deck feels terrible, like the opponent just pulled off a miracle, and it is named appropriately as such. The Legends or Terra counterpart would be none other than Seraphine. She wants to use cheap, efficient, and oftentimes generated removal in order to slow down the opponent while leveling both herself and Ezreal over the course of the game. This deck then plays its version of Gadgeton Auctioneer, known as Back Alley Bar, decreasing the cost of cards that haven't been played yet. You can get some crazy one-turn combos, especially if Seraphine and Ezreal are leveled, killing the opponent in the same way as Prep, Sprint, Prep, Eviscerate, Leroy Jenkins type shenanigans. And much like Miracle Rogue, this deck feels terrible to lose against, not only because they pulled off a miracle, but it was one that you realistically can't even play around because the deck has access to generating cards from any region, which makes it impossible to guess what's going to happen. Another cult classic would be the ever-threatening Aggro Shaman. Much like Face Hunter, this deck wants to play fast, and use a combination of units and spells to deal crazy amounts of direct damage in order to close out games. What separates Aggro Shaman is its ability to pull insane Rockbiter weapon plays onto Wind Fury units, attacking multiple times a turn with just a crazy buffed unit with a massive attack stat. Now this play pattern is no stranger to Legends of Runeterra, as it's home to the recently infamous Red Gwen. This deck stores attack stats in Grave by having certain units die, and then the stat is given to attacking units for upwards of like 7 extra damage on an attacker, oftentimes more. So we have units hitting face with just a really high attack stat, but remember how I mentioned Wind Fury and attacking multiple times a turn? Yeah, we have that too. It's called Katarina. Which, funnily enough, creates an infinite with Eternal Dancers, which admittedly is harder to pull off now, but technically still in the game. Fun side note as well, Aggro Shaman can run Lightning Bolt, and is used as a removal spell in a lot of matchups if it wants to stay ahead. Well, Red Gwen has that in the forms of Quietus and Ravenous Flock, so I think that's a little nice comparison between the two as well. Back to another classic and recognizable slow deck, Control Priest. This deck really cares about putting up units and then healing them. Oftentimes the unit summoned even damages itself so the priest can heal it up in order to have premium stat lines. Oftentimes, Control Priest would win through board pressure by using big units and heals, very simple combat focused playstyle with HP gain for face as well. Imagine if you gave the deck a location that says, once you heal 20 HP of allies, win the game. That's right, if you're playing this card you'd be in Legends of Runeterra and whipping out Soraka Tom Kench. This deck also has units that damage themselves on summon so that they can be healed up to premium stats. And it has a plethora of strong units, buffs, AoE heals, removal, and draw. The only thing that sets it apart is instead of playing strong legendaries back to back to win in the late game, it has a win con to play around known as Starspring, which is a win the game style card just like the earlier mentioned Rise. Another PTSD inducing deck is up next, and that is Combo Druid. I remember the days of Druid using mana ramping into removal, into draw, into removal, into big unit that's annoying to deal with, into removal, into a full damage combo win con. Did I mention removal? Well, I must be talking about Legends of Runeterra's Zombie Anivia then. This deck also has mana ramping into removal spells, into annoying units like Anivia herself, Rekindler, and more removal. The point of the deck is to have multiple Anivias in the grave and then summon them all back for huge AoE damage and striking units. Her effect is once per card, so the only limit to her damage is the board space. 6 birds attacking on turn 10 onwards is 12 direct damage to the opponent's entire board plus face. It's very similar to Force of Nature Savage Roar combos, 
where you have nothing on board and then all of a sudden, you have 30 plus damage all in one go, after using ramp to get ahead and removal to stall over the course of the game. And that brings us to the last deck of the video. I personally wanted to revisit Goblins vs Gnomes, as it's the expansion home to a lot of my fond memories of Hearthstone. One of the decks that I played at the time, for a class I didn't really enjoy by the way, is Mech Paladin. The main goals of Mech Pally are to 1. Assemble a board of attacking units that all share a tribe, which is Mech, and 2. Attack relentlessly in an aggressive fashion, but not so much to where it's a pure aggro deck, it's more like a mid-range style with the ability to reach lethals even on turn 9 or 10 without running out of steam on the way. The use of a tribe, but also the ability to play in the mid-game is best comparable to Lurk in Legends of Runeterra. Instead of mechs, there are these weird sandfish monster creatures like Rek'Sai from the hit Netflix show Arcane. These units help each other attack and deal damage, much like mech synergies did for Pally. The deck also doesn't run out of steam, and even includes some top end cards that cost 8. And that's it for the translated decks for this video. I wanted to cover one popular deck from each of the base classes, that way each class has some representation and doesn't feel left out. Since I stopped playing before Demon Hunter and Death Knight came out, I'll need some help comparing those decks to what I know in Legends of Terra. So if this video does well, I'm definitely open to doing a part 2, where I cover more of the base classes, and maybe some Demon Hunter and Death Knight decks as well. Let me know in the comments below if you have any comparisons in mind, and make sure to drop a like, that way I know you guys want more of this kind of video. If you're a Hearthstone refugee looking for another card game but don't know where to start, definitely check out my beginner guide and beginner deck videos. That's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, gameplay highlights, and maybe even more translated Hearthstone decks in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!